welcome to the Reality Revolution. And I'm so excited today. I have Tom Douse from Infinite Creations, a wonderful YouTube channel that you have to check out. Tom discusses everything from Neville Goddard to Abraham Hicks to reality transurfing. Recently went on a wonderful trip to India and I reached out after several of his videos and after a little bit of time, we were able to make a connection here and uh, we, can, we can talk about some of the stuff we have. We uh, are probably very much on the same level about some of the stuff that we uh, talk about on both of our channels. So, hello, Tom. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Hey, Brian. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it immensely. I'm a huge fan of your channel. There's some, for people that haven't had access to Tom's stuff, you've got to check it out. He has some really good meditations and you discuss some topics on how to change the subconscious mind and some intricacies about Neville Goddard. Some, and one of the things that I love about your channel is, you, you, I don't know how you do it, but you're so chill. I mean, you have, you're so calm and relaxed, which is, you know, it, 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 when I watch it, I get very relaxed and it, it's, it's an interesting way of teaching. I've, I've gotten a lot from some of your, your stuff. So what made you get into putting YouTube videos out talking about stuff like reality creation and law of attraction? Well, that's a good question. But firstly, I have to say, I almost want to be interviewing you because I've never seen such an interesting channel. Oh, well, thanks. And I've, honestly, like the, the, the video length, I'm fascinated by that and how you pack in just such, such amazing content to the thumbnails. I'm kind of a bit annoyed that I'm the subject, but uh, we'll roll with that today. But yeah, I just have to say, like, you know, viewers of Ryan's channel, you're in the right place here. He's got oh, well, man. amazing knowledge. That, I appreciate that immensely. That means a lot. If this is a lot of fun, I think, for both of us. I think we're exploring stuff that's fun to explore. I can tell that you enjoy it as well. So, uh, Yeah, well, I suppose that, answers, that actually sort of gets into, segues into your question about what got me into this. Yeah. Um, posting videos on YouTube and everything. It's kind of was like, it goes actually back like a long time ago with just this general urge to express myself and be of value, be of service to others and something you know i think we all even as teenagers can start to resonate with that idea we want to have a certain impact we want to have a passionate career um you know to enjoy specific aspects of life that resonate with us and we're starting to find ourselves so i always knew that i wanted to put myself out there in some way that was i knew was going to be outside my comfort zone at the time right and youtube i guess over the last couple of years it's really just like skyrocketed and I remember as little as five years ago, there wasn't as much monetization or business on YouTube. Right. And then all of a sudden, it, it just explodes. And you, I kind of, um, I, I started the, another uh, more personal development, practical mm-hmm. channel like about a year ago. Had some videos there, but then, you know, sort of stopped that and then sort of transitioned into the second channel, which was more about manifestation and integrating more of my knowledge over that year between my first channel. So that's how I got onto YouTube. Right with this specific channel, but yeah, it was always this urge to just to be of service to others and help. Mm. That's awesome. So obviously when you get into this and and you have maybe had some experiences uh, that you look back on that made you say, wow, I really want to look into this further. Maybe you had something manifest or a miracle happen or some, some kind of synchronicity. A lot of times that's what happened. Something miraculous had happened. Uh, is there some story that, that goes along with your spiritual transformation? So, again, my, my story, the interesting thing is it doesn't really start in the spiritual realm at all. Right. Like I, was, I'm like, uh, I studied philosophy in, in university and mm-hmm. was very, like, very like, hyper-analytical mind, always racing around. Maybe you can relate. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, basically the thing that really got it for me was I was studying all these amazing philosophers, thinking that I was you know, the, quite the intellectual, you know, quite, right. getting quite a handle on life. <laughs> and uh, turns out that I w- it was actually, I was the most blind person of anyone I knew. Right. The average person could have been more aware than I was. And that was the truth going back you know, four years ago. Mm-hmm. And the thing that did it was like getting into a, the basic personal development notion of, do you realize that you're actually like thinking thoughts on autopilot that you're not aware right. of? And then it was like, what, what's this? I, was, I, was, I wanted to study more Descartes and and uh, Nietzsche and, you know, get me, get me the real stuff. And then it was like, oh, hang on, this, there's something to this. And I start digging within and I realized like, oh, wow, I'm, like there's a, there's a whole can of worms I'm opening here. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's beliefs that like don't support me. And it was kind of like this. It was like a mini awakening, but I still didn't even know about spirituality. It was just more of this sense of, oh, my goodness, like I can empower myself here. Right. And, I'm, and I'm vulnerable and I'm flawed 
I'm better than no one. It was very humbling. Mm-hmm. And it was just like this, this understanding of like, oh, we can reprogram our subconscious minds and we can change and, and upgrade our identity to, to just be more positive, empowering people and sort of let go of those like limiting neurotic aspects of our personality. Right. So that, that happened to me in about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. We're sort of like from one video, sort of getting hinting at what the self image is and all of this kind of stuff to doing like you know, a couple of journaling sessions looking within. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, this stuff is so powerful. And that's what sparked my journey along you know, personal development and then ultimately leading more into the spiritual domain, mm-hmm. territory, and then into manifestation in this channel. One of the, the main uh, topics that you like to discuss on your channel is the subconscious mind. Uh, you and I are very interested in this, how to hack the subconscious, how to change it. Clearly, you, you reach a point and you realize, I'm doing all this stuff, but my subconscious is not working with me. So I can change it. I think a lot of people come to that point and you have some really good videos and suggestions on how to change the subconscious mind. It's, it's a lot, it can be more difficult. And so I just wanted to get some of your suggestions for, for the reality revolution. You have, I mean, I'm definitely going to put the links in your videos, but uh, you have, you, you have some pretty good suggestions pre-sleep and sleep wise and on how to really get in there and hack your subconscious mind. And I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the interesting thing is um, there, there are amazing techniques and you actually cover a ridiculous amount of them as well. Um, so, you know, what I would say is that everyone can reprogram the subconscious mind mm-hmm. and everyone's exactly where they need to be in their own journey. And I think right. some kind, sometimes it's actually not so much about can I do it, what technique. It's, it's about right. becoming in that state of I'm ready for a change because in truth be told, you can um, you know, imagine before sleep. That'll do the trick. You can imagine right. you see, you can feel into it. That'll start doing it. You can listen to uh, what I call desire tapes, right. which is where you, it's like a series of new beliefs and descriptions about your life, and you can listen to that with some music on the background. It's like your, your favorite, new favorite song. And right. so you can do that. Like That's powerful stuff. And they don't take too long to set up, but what it really is is about you kind of aligning with what you really want, I found. And it's like in reality transferring the, the heart, and mind mm-hmm. and getting that, that, that harmony in that relationship. And then basically the subconscious mind, it's like very easy to reprogram from that point. And so I found that in my own journey, it's like even after I was telling you about how I was finding out about subconscious mind and my beliefs and everything like that, I actually was getting coaching as well, a law of attraction, personal development coaching. Mm-hmm. And we were getting these potent, powerful techniques and I didn't apply them for 10 months <laughs> after I found out about them because I think in the background of my own mind, I knew that, you know, like once I do this, I have to be like ready that I want to change and that's okay. I was just building myself up in other areas and getting a bit more life experience. And then I do the subconscious mind stuff and then my whole journey just like really took off. And that was in about the last year and a half. So does that answer you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Kind of. You recently traveled to India and it's pretty interesting. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that trip and that journey and, and how that changed your perspective. I mean, they, they made you take your phone away or you were, you, were, you were put into, just tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, that was not pretty, the whole phone away yeah. piece. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that was, that was a really spontaneous thing. Actually, I was listening to this, have you heard of the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill? By Napoleon Hill, wonderful book, yeah. yes. Yeah, good book, isn't it? Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I think very early on, he sort of starts talking about following your intuition and you know, like this idea of the higher self or mm-hmm. this, this wiser version of yourself that you can kind of tune into and they have answers or it has answers just waiting there for you. It's almost right. like right under your nose. And so I was, um, you know, thinking it was an ordinary week. It was a Monday. I was going to go in to do some work in the city. Right. So and you then, did this um, out of the blue. I, I, I didn't even know I was going to India. That is, and then two, that two is weeks amazing. I, was there. I love it. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was the, yeah, quite a out of character bold thing, but right. <clears throat> excuse me. But yes, yeah, so I was listening to this thing and I did the exercise on the train. There's morning commuters about a foot away from my head going like this to, 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 right, right. on the train like that. And I'm just doing this, you know, higher self <laughs> you know, connecting thing and then saying, got a clear message. Let's, let's go to India. Let's do it. And I just went, Oh, you, you know, you kind of go, Oh, you're kidding intuition. <laughs> oh, this is really inconvenient. <laughs> um, so I went, all right, what do you want next? And it said, just go to the nearest library and, and look up, look up stuff. So an hour after that, I knew all about ashrams. I knew the flight costs. Right. I knew the vaccinations, got the ball rolling. 
put some savings into it and was there in two weeks. And so that's how it sort of, uh, that's how I arrived there. And then the experience itself was just amazing because the thing about Rishikesh, mm-hmm. I mean, you talk about a bit about vibrationary channel and, and how the, the planet is like, you know, we're elevating and, and there's, it's more potent and quick manifestation because mm-hmm. we are arriving at higher and higher states in our own vibration Absolutely, and things yeah. like that. Same with the lower polarity as well. And I think that's the thing about Rishikesh is like getting into that, that you know, spiritual hub where the whole culture is based around it. It's like this little, um, this little, little nook on the planet Earth where it's like mm-hmm. it's so concentrated in that high vibration energy. And so I think I was drawn to that on some level. And right. getting there was just like you're in there and, you, and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting next to an, an enlightened yogi. It's just kind of this real, you wouldn't even know it. He was just this really amazing, like beautiful person, just really yeah. authentic. And he's just, just there like delivering, you know, like these truth bombs at breakfast. And you're just kind of being like, this, is this normal? And, uh, <laughs> like the daily uh, thing, right? Yeah, just like, oh, we're eating breakfast. And do you know about the soul? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so yeah, yeah, we, I just like did a lot of journaling, a lot of healing, and we did meditation and stuff. And I was really trying to prove within myself that, this stuff isn't just wishful thinking yeah. that we really are. There is an, there is a different dimension to us and that we actually have this creative power and we can hack our subconscious mind and we can create our reality. And it was important for me to kind of validate that at like some kind of depth within myself. Not, not completely, not at, right. uh, I'm certainly no one's ever done. I don't believe in, in harnessing this power, but something in me, we just wanted to get this like real sense of understanding beyond what I had, I'd had at that time. Right. And so, yeah, they took away my phone. There was no Wi-Fi. Right. I didn't have an international SIM. Um, in my, I don't know why I didn't get that sorted. You know, right. Probably the lack of planning. But, yeah, and so w- you were kind of just forced to think about this kind of stuff and, and go within. I had a couple of books I was reading at the time mm-hmm. and then go to the classes. And, and the interesting thing as well was the uh, physical part of the classes, like doing the yoga. Didn't really, never really done yoga. Most unflexible person you probably right. meet in a lineup of 100 people. You probably find I, I'm the least, most inflexible. I mean, there were, you know, we, were, we were with people in their 70s at right. the ashram staying with me and they were more flexible than me. So I went from sort of being really stiff to fully opened up and just... Really? In that shorter period of time? Yeah, two weeks. Because you have to do three and a half hours every morning. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was kind of... It, it, was a, it was a bit of like a, a daunting thing when you'd wake up, you know, five in the morning and you go, all right... We're in, we're in till nine. Right. <laughs> so these are more simple um, um, yoga or you're doing pretty complicated balancing. T- I mean, there's different kinds of yoga. So mm-hmm. it was just a, it was a, a Shavasana. What, what, what kind of exercises did they have you do? So it was, it was, it, it was a lot of different ones, but we were doing yoga asanas. So Asan, oh, okay. hold it, yeah. So like just holding poses and it would start off very easy. Like the most simple thing of like, just, just warm up your wrists and then right. it would be like, get your fingers and we'd literally just do every body part all the way through. And so basically every single time you'd, you'd stretch out and hold and release like all, all this energy. Right. Uh, Cause that, that's what they believe. They believe there's like toxin, toxic energy gets built up in the body. And then by, you know, really stretching it out, you kind of get that energy moving. Right. And then like, yeah, so we just like stretch out all the toxins um, according to what was happening. And then the whole body would be done by the end of the three hours, three and a half hours. Now so. this is interesting. It's, it goes along with the personal theory. Are you doing the yoga exercises before at the ashram are they mm-hmm. doing the exercises before the meditation are you doing the meditation first and then the exercises so we did yeah, we actually did um pranayama breathing before right. the yoga which okay. is like it's like kind of a, a mix of meditation and yoga it's kind of right. like these um mindful breathing exercises but there's a, there's a slight bit of body element like you might put a, a hand across your stomach and then do some like breathing out fast exhaling out of your nose okay. and kind of like push in um it was like a semi-meditation, but we do that and then the yoga. And then in the evening, we do like a, a sitting down or lying down meditation, more formal, simple right. style. Yeah. It's so almost like the sequence is built, even that breathing is it's a build up energy. Mm-hmm. And then you have this pool of energy for your meditation later. I, mm-hmm. I, I start to see this pattern. So it was interesting when you said that. So, so yeah, yeah was- one of the first, um, totally different, we're going to ch- different subject. But one of the first times I saw your name was a comment on a video about the law of one, something I'm, uh, yeah. I haven't really talked about on my channel, but I'm yeah, fascinated by it. And so I noticed that you're interested in this too. Um, mm. I haven't had an episode where I have explained, it's probably too hard to explain, but 
essentially it's a channeled work book that talks about the way that the universe is put together, that there's seven densities of the universe. Uh, mm-hmm. What is your thoughts on the law of one? And mm-hmm. what is your reflection on it? Because I, I guess I, if anybody gets a chance, look at Aaron Abke. He has a pretty good um, couple videos that explain what mm-hmm. it's about. But it's good to talk to somebody else that's actually been exposed to that, <laughs> and their opinion. You're dying, aren't you? You're just bursting to talk about it. Right, point. yeah, because it's not something. Oh, well, yeah, it's somebody on right. the street. Hey, have you heard of the law? Yeah, maybe. We're, in the third, <laughs> right. we're only in the third density, mate. Don't right, worry about right. it. We're moving to a new density. We are. Sun is, yeah, a, is, a, <laughs> is a living logos, I promise. <laughs> so. Yeah, by the way, absolutely can confirm Aaron Abke. Check him out. Amazing yes, guy. Yes, he's amazing incredible. Job. Absolutely. They're a really cool person. Um, yeah, so I've never, I actually straight up haven't read them because I know they're very okay. dense. Um, yeah, and it's, like it's pretty dense. Multiple, yeah. volu- multiple volumes, <clears throat> and it's it's still even. It, I know it's out there for most people. Right. Right. Out, right off the bat, I'll say that obviously I'm not. I'm not certain about any of this stuff. I'm right. just very. It just piques my interest, and it resonates on several some level. Right. That this is true, and it t- it does tie into like my like kind of mystical experiences that I've had here and there that kind of like open your mind up enough. And when you're in that open-minded state, this stuff comes in and it's kind of like just reading the morning news that you don't even bat an eyelid. And you go, is this, where, is this normal? You know yeah. what I mean? So, but it is, it is fascinating. It was, um, it is fascinating. I don't know if you resonate with this, but you, you read all these books. You, right. You're so into theory, uh, these theories and these amazing ideas that you kind of become desensitized to them. Well, they, not in yes. the, in, you're not passionate about them, but that you're familiar with them and you're around them all the time. And, but when you first heard about them, it was like a mind-blowing Amazing, right. sense of like, awe and experience. wonder when you first learn yeah. this information, right? And so when I was reading about and learning about the law of one, that was like the first time in a, a year or so, like where I really came out of something that was like, this is totally brand new information right. that, you know, we are these souls going through density after density for billions of years and that there are beings that are billions of years ahead of us right. in their own evolution, contacting a woman in the 1980s. <laughs> penning this like doctorate level amount of thesis almost on knowledge on all, right. all the different densities and evolution of the, the soul. Just mind blowing. It's it really, really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> so I can tell you were also had similar awe inspiring experience when you were exposed to Neville Goddard. Neville Goddard is just such a wonderful writer and, and is one of those that reaches out and goes beyond the words. You can tell there's something else going on there. So I wanted to get your perspective. There's almost kind of a little, if you notice online, there's a little pendulum starting to form a, the Goddard versus the transurfing versus the law, but there seems to be these little pendulums forming. Uh, to me, I see consistency in all of it, mm. uh, but it's good to talk to somebody that's been exposed to these things. So t- let's talk about Neville Goddard a little bit. You know, yeah, what, is your, what is your uh, impressions of Neville Goddard? And uh, you know, what, just give me your thoughts on, on, on his teachings. Mm, absolutely. Well, firstly, I absolutely agree with you. I see consistency as well. I know people yeah. don't see consistency and they start to split hairs and, right. and get quite passionate about what's better and what, what works and everything. I totally get that you know, there are better techniques than others in, in, right. across all three. The thing I love about Neville Goddard is that when you listen to his books, they go straight to that intuitive level. Right. And if you're open to that, it's almost like having a personal mentor that basically is just, just giving you the, the, the amazing truth about your manifestation power, right. your ability to create your own reality. And he, he was the one that talks mostly about the imagination more than any other teacher mm-hmm. I've, or, or teaching I've come across and just like the power of the imagination and made me really want to invest in building that, up that muscle. And I know some people can be intimidated by that and I was too because right. sometimes you can start visualizing and it's very hazy and you're just constantly building up this ability. And I suppose what would I say about Neville Goddard is – you're either going to like him or not. Right. I know he has a lot of uh, religious symbolism and he explores the Bible as his main source of reference. Right. That doesn't bother me, even though I'm not religious in any sense. I'm not tied to or affiliated with any religion. Um, that doesn't bother me again because he's not actually, he's talking about the, the symbolic right. he's nature the of Bible it anyway. He's making it something that's never been. It, it, yeah, yeah, which is really, really interesting. Right. And um, it's just very empowering. He's, he says that, you know, everything exists within the human imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, in reality, chance surfing, that would be the alternate space or right. you know, the, this, this quantum space beyond the, this physical realm. Right. Uh, so, again, a consistency They're here. consistent, yeah. 
And yeah, I, I just think that if you listen to some lectures online or, or see teaching around them, what you'll also notice in the comments is that people have a lot of success stories and they, they do these techniques and then they go, this thing literally just popped up in my life. Right. And that's what's happened to me when you are open to it, you resonate with it and you just go with what he says and you just give it a chance and then, well, that, this works. This stuff like creates stuff out of thin air sometimes. And, it's like he's yeah. a time traveler. I'm just the, the time yeah. that he was creating this material so completely <laughs> yeah. out of his time and place. That's what is amazing. People don't mm. really, they, they treat him like he's from the 80s. He's not. Yeah, no. He's, <laughs> he, he was, yeah, he was already deceased for 10 years. Right. Yeah. So, so that, mm. um, what do you think about the mythology around Neville Goddard that he had met this, uh, is it Abdullah or Abdul in, in, in Ethiop an Ethiopian uh, minister that taught him some of this stuff. I think mm. that's interesting too. Is there is there a sect uh, that is kind of a Godardian secret sect out there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, mean, yeah. I don't know, right? It's, it, that I find interesting. I mean, I, we can contemplate. There's not there's no proof of any, anything, but mm. I think that's interesting to me in a, a little way. What do you think? Yeah, about? yeah, no, I totally agree. It's it's all, it's very mysterious. It's almost got this mythical tone when you hear right. about. These encounters and going to Barbados right. and all these like it's like the, the, the it's like the um kind of like the, the you know the creation of fire but in the fifties learning about the imagination you get these right. kind of like historical events that are taking place and who are these people um, to me it just kind of adds to this the fondness I have for it it's because it is fun it, it makes it more interesting to have the, these stories and I think it makes him more fascinating as a person right. and he actually does you know, talk about his life more factually as well and his struggles and, uh, you know, moving out of his family, you know, money issues, struggling to even use these techniques and right. see any results in the start, struggling to believe it was possible and have faith that he could do things. And that's where Abdullah comes in, who was that mentor figure right? that, you know, seemed to have really helped him kind of solidify his knowledge and be able to then exponentially increase his results. And then obviously he pops up as a teacher for all of us to enjoy. So. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, it's interesting. And even when I think I've read or heard all of his lectures, there's still a bunch more that mm. the amount of information out there by Goddard is, is also pretty amazing as well. So mm, let, <clears throat> let, let's together, let's, let's come up with our own. What do you think is happening? Are we, are we choosing a reality that's already there? Are we creating one? Let me ask that basic question. Are we creating one out of thin air mm. or, is it a real, or does it matter? Um, mm. What is your, obviously there, we're not going to get a true answer in this discussion, but to talk to somebody else that's thinking about this, mm. you have a working theory of what do you think is happening when we are manifesting and creating these realities that just, mm. that, that, that you've pondered and thought about. So I think firstly that we exist on more than just this level. This, right. this physical reality. And that's based on, you know, my spiritual experiences where you can, if you've read Dr. Joe Dispenza, he'll talk about it as this right. quantum field and that when you, you know, you get into a meditative state and you become no thing as he describes it, which is literally nothing. There's no physical right. connection anymore to this reality. You become the vast awareness and that's what he calls this quantum field. And Neville Goddard would call that the realm of the human imagination, but it's this, right. this, the consistent idea is you're going within yourself to, to pull out and sort of choose a reality uh, from this, the, this, the archive space. So I'm throwing in all these techniques, oh, no, I, uh, I, these, these terminologies from reality transforming. Right. The consistent idea for me is that it is within you it is because within you. you are the, the one source consciousness. And you're also just this, this point of consciousness right now. Like we're, we're this human limited point of view. But then if you go within yourself and you become enlightened, you realize that you're one with everything. And that on some level you had a, a, a role in sort of bringing all of existence to the point it's at. So if based on that, uh, you know, uh, foundation, within you is also the power to create any reality you want. And obviously that will be a reality that looks like this physical world, but it's a sort of a, a new form that you've never experienced or a new set of objects, new set of emotions, new set of thoughts. That's all within you and you can kind of select that within yourself. With, and in choosing that, you, you kind of expand towards it. That's how I view it. Right. And it kind of moves towards you. 
at the same time. That's how I, I view it because, you know, enlightened masters, uh, masters like Eckhart Tolle, they teach us right. it's only the present moment. So really it's just one present moment after the next that you're experiencing. Mm-hmm. And within that, you're kind of putting an order saying, I'd like to arrive at, you know, a million dollars in the bank account. And you just kind of move one present moment at a time based on what you've selected in yourself. And it is kind of waiting over there, but it's, you're kind of moving towards it and it's kind of getting closer to you. So it's like this merging with that reality right. that you've selected that exists within you at another level of this. You're this driving towards level. it. Like you're on a motorcycle moving with your attention is what you're Yeah, doing. it's like that. So it's, it's kind of like what reality in reality transurfing, how Vadim talks about, you know, an outer intention. It's kind of these two forces. There's, there's what you're doing in the level of willpower in your everyday life and right. selecting it, taking action towards it. All of that's the practical stuff's really important. Obviously, also the techniques in selecting and visualizing what you want. And then there's an outer force, which is this, this higher self version of yourself, which is what I'm trying to get with when I say you're turning within. Right. That kind of sets you up and is kind of guiding you and you're moving closer and closer towards this reality. Right. That's my hope. That's my no, no. It's, it's can quite it can get quite confusing and I'm not that good at explaining it still. But I appreciate that it. Makes sense. I think it's a question to ask. Because mm. we're talking about these things, but and, and, and it's it's that's a, an interesting perspective. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I and I definitely agree with it. So uh, just just to talk about your personal routine now that you've gone through this and you you've created the channel, you've started to analyze your own, do you have a morning routine? that mm. you've developed that, is, that works for you? Mm. So my morning routine basically took shape really recently, a little bit before I went to India. And basically mm-hmm. I was hearing about how if you do like some breathing exercises, mm-hmm. you can really like um, cultivate a lot of energy within your body and you're, you can more powerfully impact your subconscious mind. So what I do is I do 10 minutes of uh, Kundalini yoga Mm-hmm. And it's just these simple breathing techniques from a YouTube tutorial. As soon as I get up, I do that. And then right after that, I'll do my uh, imagination exercises where I imagine my dream reality. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I'll do a, I'll read instantly, like some, something to, to really stimulate myself that empowers me and says, you know, I can create my own reality. At the moment, it's Neville right. Goddard's works. So I'm just going through the complete works of that right. again. And then after that, I'll do some affirmations and or some journaling. If I'm, if I'm sensing, I don't know if you get this, but sometimes you wake up with a little bit of doubt. Right. Even though you, you have done so much work and you don't really doubt it, for some reason, given your current situation in life, you can get up, up, up off, you know, on the wrong side of the bed. And I just address that straight away and go, what is this? Oh, it's a, mm. it's a past thought that's trying to, it's, a, it's really like a past pendulum, which is like this thought form that's trying to grab my attention and pull me to this negative polarity. But that's not me anymore. I don't think like that. So I'll do a little journaling on that for five or ten minutes and just realign myself with empowering beliefs, empowering thoughts, and the ideas that I've studied. And then after that, that takes one hour. I get on with my day. That's what is it. What time do you usually get up? Get up at 5.55. Okay. Specifically. (laughs) Specifically. All right. I like that. By the time I roll out of bed, Mm -hmm. I get started by about six. So. is there, is there any dietary, I, I, it's a question I don't ask. Sometimes I regret asking people when they, about their morning routine. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you get protein right away? Do you wait the hour until you're done meditating to mm. eat or drink water? I mean, everybody has their own thing, but. Yeah, I, I drink, I, I'll drink straight away. Usually drink straight away. after sleep. Um, right, right. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll drink some water and then I'll eat breakfast straight after it. I'll just eat something fairly healthy that um, will be generally plant-based. It'll be like oats and berries and, right. and things of that nature uh, kind of thing and have a basic breakfast, something that like sustains me for a while. Right. But in terms of my overall diet, I'm kind of really a fan of the old, whole idea of body consciousness mm-hmm. and listening to your body and not judging anyone for what they have and being willing to change at any point. I got that idea from Paul Check. Do you know Paul Check? Sounds familiar. But I don't. Think yeah, he's a, he's like this um this health, uh, and he's also a health expert and like almost a philosopher these days. Right. Uh, and he talks about you can have three different diets in the one day if you're really in tune with your body. Right. And that's the whole idea that you just got to listen to your body. So if I if I'll want meat, then I'll have meat. 
tends to not be too often. Usually, like I'd say 80 to 90% of the time, it's plant-based vegetarian. And yeah, and then that, that's how I'll eat and I'll just sort of listen to my body and, and stick to that kind of like 80% at least of my food should be right. quite decent and healthy. Now you have a, an evening routine then, which you, you talk about a little bit on your channel. Uh, it's, it, it's not an hour long. It's just right as you go to bed. You Just tell us a little bit more about that. So yeah, it's usually 15, 15 minutes. So firstly, I'll write three things I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. Get in that mindset of just, a, you know, that the whole attitude of gratitude thing. So I'll just write a couple of things down from the day or life. Uh, that tends to be quite good. Then I'll write under the three things. I'll write one moment in the day where I fell off track. Mm-hmm. And it'll usually be something where I just was a bit too reactive. And I didn't come from that, that more noble self that I know I, I'm trying to strive to be right. and embody. And so if, whatever I've done, I'll just r- go back into that scene in first person point of view and I'll just rewrite that and say, no, I did that right. And it just makes you feel, oh, I had a perfect day. Right. And then, uh, then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll turn the lights out. Um, my girlfriend will be next to me like doing whatever. So sometimes it's kind of like, you, you, you're done. <laughs> I go to bed. I've got imagining to do. Come on. <laughs> right. anyway, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, then I'll, do, I'll imagine my scene. And then right as I'm about to fall asleep, I put in a sub, my subliminal tape. Okay. Which happens to be my desire tape. And that just plays on all night. On, and on, on the lowest repeat. volume. Yeah. And then that, that's I fall asleep every night. Well, you, you mentioned your girlfriend. So um, some people struggle when they go through this process in maintaining a relationship. The person that they're with is not on the same level, doesn't understand, thinks it's weird and unusual. Uh, yeah. And so you, is, is your girlfriend on, on the same level as you or she's just like, oh, you can do whatever? How does, I mean, how do you, yeah. make, how do you, how have you maintain your relationship through your spiritual awakening? Brian, I'm not going to lie. She's probably going to be watching this. So okay. I'm going to hey, have to censor. No, no, <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. No, no, she, she's, she's absolute champion. She's really right. open-minded, really on board for this. Um, she's a couple of years younger than me. So I think she just literally hasn't had as much time to right. since we both started getting into all this to, um, to, to catch up really. And so she's still reading. She's exploring. We, we have like amazing conversations about it. And she's you know, building up her own whatever works for herself and Explore, exploring more of the, the ideas that I'm not familiar with, like, you know, the feminine energy and the inner goddess and all of those right. kind of notions, um, getting into all of that. And, and she's, she's big on, like, uh, minimalism and, and kind of veganism and bringing more of that into her life and decluttering because, um, yeah, she used to be really into shopping and everything and now she's more into, you know, culling things and keeping things that are meaningful. Right. But overall, she, yeah, she's really open-minded. There definitely have been challenges, definitely, right. because... I think in the early days on your journey, you kind of, it's so new to yourself that you're kind of doubting yourself. Right. And when you doubt yourself, you take out on others for not believing in you, but really it's your own projection. So that was how I used to suffer. Yeah. Through this with my girlfriend a couple of years ago is that when things didn't go my way, when I was doubting myself with all this stuff. Right. And not in that, that sense of alignment and empowerment, I would kind of be like, you know, come on, like, why aren't you coming to me with more ideas? Why aren't you doing this? And right. I've since learned that the, it's that, that old adage of lead by example is the only way you're ever going to inspire people to be their best version of themselves. Right. And so I leave it. I, I just, as much as I can, I just let anyone be, whether it's my girlfriend or my friends or my family, I let them be and I try and just focus on myself. And um, interestingly, like the enlightened master that I was with in the ashram, mm-hmm. towards the... You know, it was a couple of days left in my retreat there but at the end of the two weeks. And he, um, he started talking to me late at night, just us two kind of looking out at the stars uh, uh, on the balcony. It was like a really nice moment. And yeah. he was just saying like, your yeah, number one thing I've learned in life is that it's self-care. It's, and that's actually the most selfless thing you can do because when you're looking after yourself and doing what you need to do to be in a healthy relationship with yourself mm-hmm. and to have you know, respect and self-love, then you can absolutely be this like beacon of light that can help others. But as soon as you lose that, that inner uh, self-care and, and you know, cultivating what works for you and how to be your best self, you lose that, you're actually a liability to other people and you start devolving very quickly. So he's like, num- he said, number one thing, self-care. He kept doing that, self-care, one thing, yeah. take that away from that self-care. So that kind of resonated with me and it was really cool to see someone with that amount of wisdom you know, if he had one right. thing to tell me, he'd say, look after yourself first and, and 
and love yourself and care for yourself. And that resonates right. with me too. I, I think that's yeah. a great lesson. It really does. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> so, so to obviously you're, you're somebody that reads and, and is interesting in this level of literature. Is there any books that I might not have heard about that, that you, you know, have read that, that mm. we can discuss in the same line in the, in, about metaphysics, anything in that particular genre that we're talking about that, that maybe you'd like to discuss? Look, probably not likely because I know you're very well read, but um, Never know. I'd say, have you heard of uh, Prosperity Consciousness? It's the most recent book I've been reading. It's literally well, about the subconscious mind. There's a couple mind. Prosperity yeah. Consciousness, the one by Frederick Dotson or the one by um, um, Ler, Ler, um, Lerman? Lerman. 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 Okay, that one. I think one his name's Frederick, Frederick as well. Frederick Lerman, is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's that the is one. just, I have listened to that three times. There you go. I just <laughs> love I can't even find this, the hard copy. I've only been able to listen oh, really? to it on Audible. But I, um, yeah, that is amazing. When you, when, amazing just by book. listening to that book, you will yeah. start to form a prosperity con. Even if you don't yeah. apply the, it's the weirdest thing. You know? Yeah, it's so true. Yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It's just the like you just, thing. you're just absorbing all of this kind of like these, these ideas about prosperity and you're feeling quite good about yourself for doing it. Right. So he, if you struggle with that, yeah. Splitting up your bank accounts, which is pretty great. And he gives some examples, but. <laughs> I don't yeah. know, something about the way he describes everything. When you come out of it, you're like, Shh, in a different <laughs> mindset. There's a consciousness yeah, you are. from that yeah. material. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's really good because I, I don't know if you relate to this, but I, I've never, it's not that I've had like limiting things about money, but it's more right. like I just never really think about it because for me, it was always the impact. It was always the alignment. It was always the passion and like right. kind of finding my voice. And I always just never thought about money. It was not that I didn't care about it, not that I had anything against it. But now it's kind of like, no, it's important. It's important to have a healthy relationship with that. And so for me, like, you know, uh, I had never really thought about money. It was like, oh, it's a fantastic book. for just been like, oh, it's nothing to be threatened about. It's something that right. it's actually very simple. You've just got to put your consciousness into the prosperity consciousness bandwidth. And that book is like, there is it's that really book is that. tuned into that band flute 100 percent yeah absolutely that is so awesome that you recommended that book because yeah I, that one calls out to me for sure and i've definitely mm. applied it and it's definitely worked for me you know that's so, awesome that's um so you good. um uh, th that, that's part of this a lot of times people get into the law of attraction let's be honest it's about m money mm. or a relationship that they want to get into and so money is the is the hardest it's a it's a it's not the easiest thing to manifest because we, you know, our hearts don't know about money. And so we could sit and talk about what techniques have you used or read about that really resonated in manifesting money? What's the, you know, what comes to mind? Cause it's an interesting, it's like the Chinese finger toy. Cause if you focus on the money too much, then you're focusing on the lack. There's always that thing about law of attraction. When you, when you focus on it too much, then, so you always have to find this perfect little balancing point. Mm -hmm. what comes to mind that, that, that has helped you that you that mm. could advise the listeners yeah um so I, I, there's a couple of things so my one of my my law of attraction coach that i mentioned before used to say this thing quite a lot that said when you go after your wants your needs are met and i thought right. that was very powerful and true so go for what you're passionate about and the money kind of just aligns because what you're passionate about is valuable to other people and that's a very common one as well. You hear create, create right. value for others and don't worry about it. You'll, you'll, you'll see there's money in whatever you want to do. And with the power of the internet, uh, you know, you, you absolutely can kind of channel whatever creative hobbies you have and passions into, you know, something that can bring you in income in some way. So I, I think as well, though, I understand how when you're in a situation where you want money, sometimes just going directly for that may work for other people, but I've never done that. So yeah. I've always had to, as you said, I think that was, that's true as well for me that yet the heart doesn't connect with money. It's a, it's a piece of paper. Right. It's if you connect it to a situation, even if that's a holiday for you or a, a passionate business or something like that, whatever resonates with you, attaching it to a scene and with in which money would have to be there for that to happen right. as a, as an organic consequence of that scene that's a powerful way to start, you know, opening up your mind. And really what I found is that as you open up your mind to prosperity, uh, basically you start, you know, I think it was, I heard a teacher talking about the reticular activating system right. and how like, you know, when you're in that, that thing, your, your eyes start darting out for like signs of it. 
and you know i start seeing like lamborghinis i start seeing like it's someone you know talking about money someone handing money around you just start seeing more more and more money and yeah it's really good and you kind of just start having ideas as well pop up like oh i could do this i could do this some of them are good some of them are not be starting to be like i i'm going to create my own wealth and i think that's the most important thing probably more powerful than just kind of being like i hope someone leaves me right. money i hope i manifest an uncle that i never knew about that has a you know spare hundred thousand for me probably more to go from like that sense of empowerment of like i can create this and that's what i'm manifesting part of a, uh, an overall life picture that I, that resonates with me i agree with that that's that's perfect that's where i'm at at least with it that's awesome 100 percent. there's two topics since you are in, you have your finger in, in Neville Goddard and, and Abraham and Reality Transurfing, there's two mm-hmm. topics I want to talk about because it's just, uh, I don't know, it's 11 11. First of all, let's talk about that. You see mm-hmm. it on Facebook boards and on, you know, hey, I just saw 11 11, the angels, I'm alive, woo, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see it a lot. It's a popular yeah. thing. And maybe mm-hmm. there's some truth to it, but maybe mm-hmm. our reticular activating system is good at finding things we look for. When I start looking for things, as you said, Lamborghini, we find it. So yeah. if I'm looking, hey, if, if somebody's telling me the angels are talking to me at 1111, I'm going to see 1111 almost every time. My brain's going to be like, what, you know. So what do you think? Do, are we having synchronicities where we are being spoken to specifically? Or is it just our reticular activating system? Or is it both? And is there a way for us to distinguish the two? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? What's your yeah, no, it's a that? great, it's actually a fantastic question. Yeah. And, you know, being such a skeptic that I, that I was over the, you know, the past five years. Right. If you went to me five years ago, I go reticular activating system, cognitive biases, law of probability, right. um, apotheosis, or whatever it's called, that, that um, you know, that psychological idea of like you find patterns and they're actually meaningless, but right. you assign meaning to them. All of those things, that's, I just jump straight to that. Right. Uh, me too. It was own, yeah, yeah, and and that's fair enough because right. it, especially when you have that cliche of like you know type yes if you see eleven eleven and right. and uh, you'll have good luck today and it kind of can be cheapened. But I think when you do start to explore the nature of consciousness and reality creation, especially from a more like you know reality trans- transcending things like that, which have like science behind it, mm-hmm. you start tapping into this, and all of a sudden, an, an enormous rate of these synchronicities come up that True. astonish you. And not just simply numbers, like I've had situations where, um, for example, Neville Goddard books, like he, he'll read like a, a certain chapter of the Bible that he's referring to and he'll say like Jobs 3.21 and things like that. And I remember one time I was listening to his book and I was really aligned and there was something that was really resonating about what I was listening to. I looked at the time and he said Jobs 3.21 and the time was 3.21 and as my yeah. eyes went on 3.21, it was like, you know, aligned. I was like, see, that, that's strange. That's strange, um, yeah. Yeah, so... Things like thing, things of that nature kind of happen all the time, and I um what I do to to almost like prove it to myself because again like I'm still like yeah is this is this like a, a worthy phenomena or is this irrelevant either way or is it a sign if we want it to be a sign but we just created that and you can create a- anyway without signs um, without and in all of this, these distinctions what I do anyway is like I, I treat it as like a positive thing but I don't rely on it and when it happens when I see like a, a you know, a, a triple number or a quadruple number or something like that, right. or one, two, three, four, any of those kind of spiritual uh, numbers signifying alignment or whatever. I'll just take a screenshot on my phone. And I, I look and I get five, five to 10 a day effortlessly. Right. Um, yeah. So I'll just check and I'll go, oh, it's 333 screenshot. It's move on. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Right. Uh, so I don't try and like overhype it, but it, I think it is, I think, when you tap into this whole field, like, like you, yourself has done, you start seeing these, you start seeing it. And it's very interesting. And right. then you can get into all other kinds of spiritual territory. Well, we like can choose. I mean, we have a choice life. to make whatever we want of these signs. Yeah. We can make them awesome. And there may be a positive effect by just assuming that there are these incredible signs. I mean, I've gone on boards and just answered out of the blue. This means that everything is going to work out for you. Somebody yeah. said, oh, I just saw 11-11. What does it mean? You know, why not? Just say. It means yeah. <laughs> all of your dreams will come true because I can tell myself that. I mean, that, that's yeah, yeah, right. right. Right? Yeah, absolutely so, right. Yeah. And so, I, I did the same thing with a black cat. So I remember right before right. I went to India, the day before I went to India, I, I saw a black cat uh-huh. and I went, Oh, like that, that's meant to be a, quite a serious omen. 
And I just went right at that point. It was like a really good example. That's a fantastic sign. Uh, black, black hats mean good luck, right? <laughs> Same thing. Like, uh, and obviously it did work out well. I have no idea what that played in, into effect. So again, I think, yeah, just always, it's, I think uh, Vadim talks about it in Tufti. He says, always assume the positive on whatever happens to you, even if right. in your linear, limited perspective and, and rational mind, it just seems like, how could this be beneficial? Assume um, there's an advantage assume, to it. Assume there's an advantage to it. It happened to me last night. I was trying to upload a YouTube video, got right. to the processing thing, and my hard drive cord broke. And I just went, I assume the positive in this? I don't know. All right. And what, it forced me to go to bed, so I'm more refreshed to talk to you. Right. It turns out it processed overnight. Uh, and you don't actually need to have your, your hard drive connected to process it. So it actually right. got me a good sleep. It uploaded by itself, probably forced me to be in a healthy mindset for this. There you go. So that's another, like a little nuisance. Right. Interpret the positive. Now I can actually see just a couple of hours later, sleep, a night's sleep later, it, it actually turned out to be that positive definition I gave it. So Very cool. That kind of feeds into all this, I think. Right, absolutely. One, yeah. So there's another two... Kind of, I'm almost calling them pendulums because they are. It's uh, you may know what I'm, but they're related to Neville Goddard, and I'm mm. starting to see conflict between like transurfing and Neville Goddard. Is the the first is the specific person, <laughs> the SP, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> it is a popular. It you know, and and there are people obviously that have had um, they've they've had loves in their life that they have lost and it deeply bothered by it and they desperately want to get that love back and I get it, you know, and you're going to hope in your heart that you can, you can use this power to find a specific person. Uh, but just the, to me, the, the, the looking for a specific person automatically creates importance and there, it's such a balancing act, so difficult. I mean, I think it's possible, but mm. there's definitely conflict. There's the transfer first saying that, you know, that that's impossible. And then they also, Neville Goddard has the idea that everybody is you pushed out. Mm. So there may be a misunderstanding of his teaching. People are treating it as if they're solipsistic in, in their own world and they control the universe and everybody is just them. And maybe that's, it's, to me, I see it as more of the mirror universe idea. But I want to get your perspective of it because you, you are aware of these materials. And yeah. uh, can you manifest a specific person in your opinion? I think you can. But I think it does. I think you're absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. It depends on where you're coming from. I've had cl clients that mm -hmm. came to me for this and some of them have just, you can just tell it's pure, authentic love. They really love these people. Right. And, and it's not, a, there's not a neediness for it. There's not a desperation to fill something within. Right. It's, it comes from a place of celebration and love. And I think when you come from that place of I'm worthy of this person mm -hmm. and you don't, put them on a pedestal and create importance and that'll, that'll send them away. If you're saying, please come to me, I need you. Right. That's, that'll never manifest a specific person. You have to come from, I love these people because they're amazing and, and I love myself because I'm amazing and I'm, I'm going to just flow and allow it to happen with the intention that it's specifically them. Just like it's, you can choose a specific career or, or a specific amount of money. It's the same thing. You're, you're just going, oh, I'd like that on the menu, please. And there's a, there's a reality where they feel the same for you. And, and so that, but it has to come from worth and it has to be like this organic feeling of love. And right. I think when you are in that place, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because these people and my clients all, all, all know these people in, in most often in some personal level. Right. So they, they've known these people for years, then they've drifted apart and then trying to win them back. And I think when you come from this place of self-love and worth first and, and want to see it more of as a celebration of love, by having their companionship, they actually pick up on that. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because that's highly attractive to be around someone that is complete within themselves. Right. And so that, again, it draws them in and it creates that. And so it's absolutely possible when you're in that, that state of I'm worthy of this and I'm not, I'm not desperate or needing of it. And right. so that, that answers the significant person. Yeah. That's it's my opinion, like in a martial art, like a really tough move that a lot of people can't, like a kick or some specific mm. move that it can be done, but a lot yeah. of people can't do it. There's balance involved. That's what I feel like. Like you mm. can do it, but because of the nature of it in and of itself, and I think you just hit the nail on the head. It's where they are coming from. Mm. They come mm. to it. That, that I, is, is a great explanation. Now, mm. Everybody is you pushed out. Now, I've read some people that utilize this philosophy, 
and it almost can create a mental illness. I mean, it, whoever they're talking to, they're, they're literally thinking that they have control over that person. And I, I don't think that that's what Neville Goddard was getting at. So explain what, what, what do you think is your impression of the everybody as you pushed out? And, and do you understand what I'm trying to get yeah, at? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. I think that if it makes you feel solipsistic and isolated, mm-hmm. then that's just a thought. That's right. a thought that you're thinking in your mind. That's the perspective you're taking of it. Ultimately, in my opinion, what enlightenment reveals is that we are all connected. We, are, we do come from the same True. consciousness. And this consciousness is an infinite, infinite consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what enlightenment is. It's, it's, it's tapping into this. Like, the, I, I like to use the word divine, but I know it cannot put people. Not, uh, not in a religious sense at all, but in this sort of powerful consciousness. Mm-hmm. And we are kind of all from that source in my opinion and that's something i've I've directly experienced and when you experience it you can know that that's true but then i always make this distinction of like as good as that is we're in this physical reality and this is about this life and so sometimes it's just about letting go of that that perspective sometimes and just having fun creating what you want in this life and seeing the people even though they are connected to you and and you could be like oh they're, they're not any different from me i'm literally there i'm talking to myself that that actually doesn't doesn't serve you as opposed to saying i am talking to a real person within this reality that's all that matters to me i still have free will i still can create things i can still enjoy my hobbies i can still do anything on a practical level and it actually makes it even better because there's this sense of freedom that comes with understanding that and freedom and, and love and appreciation and just positivity that comes with being like oh everyone is connected with to me and yeah, you, it's just a shift in how you think about it. And ultimately, right. you can choose that one that makes you feel negative or you can choose that one that makes you feel positive. And ultimately, the truth is, is that beyond that, when you're at, existing as that enlightened consciousness, you, you tend not to be thinking anything at all. And that's why, and then right. you have the, an, an even more powerful sense of peace and love for humanity. That would be someone like Eckhart Tolle or Sadhguru right. coming from this, this total place of, of unity. Of unity. But we're, we, you have to be honest with yourself. We're not there. We're not, we're not yeah. at that, that spiritual master yeah. level. So we're, we're in the level of duality. Right. Therefore, we're in a level of thoughts, thought forms. Mm-hmm. And so you still have to look after that and you still have to just choose whatever you want and create a positive meaning for it. And that, that tends to solve all the problems with this whole Mm-hmm. sense of anxiety of everyone as you pushed out just by choosing to see it in that practical positive way that's what right. i think that but in saying that i did go through a period where i was jostling with this right and then i and then i did a lot of deep contemplation to arrive at this point and then it was just like ah, oh, it's actually so simple it's just the choice of the right. thought i mean it's a powerful thing to look at everybody and there's a little bit of them in me and yeah, it's very. It's a it's a powerful thing. I even even my worst enemy. I I can relate to them when I start to think like that. And I get that, and I really appreciate that perspective. I just think that uh, there, it, there may be a misunderstanding of it. People apply it, and and, m- and maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So <laughs> mm. th- one cool thing about Goddard is that he has a lot of little techniques uh, mm. that are kind of hidden in his works. Um, I you know I, I I just tried out the ladder technique where if you it work. Did it work for you? It, it, it was, I, I can't say yet. I, I, like a I, just, yeah. ago, I tried the ladder technique. Um, is there any obscure techniques? Because that's the cool thing about Goddard is there's always something new seems like that, I, I, that you, you might recommend or suggest that, uh, from, from your readings of Goddard. That's really interesting. I do really like the revision one, the, the yeah. pruning shears of revision, and that's what I do every night. That's where you basically travel back in time in your own memory and you rewrite the scene to be positive. Right. And it kind of impresses your subconscious as in, oh, wow, like I, I am coming from this, this, you know, this virtuous uh, best possible version of myself consistently. Right. And you kind of, it, it does start to make you bl- a bit blurry on do I fall out of alignment or not? And you start to just, it overall helps you cultivate this sense of like, I, I, I can respond and not react and I can maintain you know, what resonates with me and what, what I want to choose to think, even if like the news comes on right. and something like that, that's so highly negative and overwhelming. You can then revise that and be like, I saw those, that sensory data come in and it didn't shake me. 
right. and then you eventually arrive in that situation you're seeing the news again the, the next day or the next week and you actually draw off that that past revision memory rather than the actual experience and you right. go oh and you handle it and so that's a that's a really 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 cool one i i, um, I, yeah. I love that one and understanding quantum physics it, it's almost like we're changing the past a little bit a you little know, bit yeah there's you know, if, if the past is nonlinear in the way that we're starting to understand it, that exercise in and of itself, mm. especially done on a regular basis, I think can possibly pulling us into alternate timelines where the, where the past is actually revised. How would we know? Yeah. Uh, and that's, would, and a lot of these cases, <laughs> unless there's a major reality shift, and the, in some reality shifts, we might, it might literally shift us in that moment. We, we, we always thought that that thing happened. So mm. it's fun to experiment with, and I and I think that that's consistent with reality transurfing with, with Vadim Zeeland. So yeah, the, I, there's like the whispering technique, which is pretty. There's some pretty cool techniques. That, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I have to say I really like um, the 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 technique, the four step technique. In, I'm going to make a video on this soon in um, mm. Tufti the Priestess, and um, you know finding the plate, the you plate. Know, getting between the two screens, getting right. that sense of mindfulness, activating the plate, and just picturing a really simple scene. Mm -hmm. I found that to be just a profound, and I use it to do little things like, you know, uh, manifest a free cup of coffee or, right. uh, you know, I did one the other day where we, I don't know if um, in America they have keep cups, keep cups. It's like a, a environmental coffee cup that you, you give to the barista and they make your coffee for you and then you give it back and you keep using the same cup. Right. They, they don't like have a, that yet, but I'm sure, you know, being in California, I'll be the first to see it. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. in a good spot for that. But yeah, in Australia, they've, they've really taken off and everyone's getting this keep right. cup and they're about 10, cool. 10 or 15 bucks. And I, and I said, I'll just manifest one. And so I did, you know, a simple technique of just becoming present on the way. I did this with my eyes open right. and just would just get present, see myself with a keep cup and just drop it. And I did it about two or three times a week passes. My, mm -hmm. I never, I didn't tell anyone, my right. girlfriend buys a keep cup that's the exact model you know the exact oh, wow. color just sitting there and i, I was talking to her and we we're having a deep discussion about something and i kind of went i looked over the side and i just was looking and i just saw the keep cup and i was like you are joking <laughs> i burst out laughing and it was just it was right there and then I, I had it in my hand and i went and i gave it to the barista in the coffee shop exactly like it was in my mind from i'd say a total of like 30 seconds of visualizing over a couple of days right with that technique so it's really, so really two cool. things that brings up too the, the first is you mentioned something in there that i think is super powerful that mm -hmm. we almost can't talk about but is the not talking about it have you found that your manifestations exercises are way more powerful when you do not tell anybody about it i, I when i've asked this yeah. question there's generally a much much larger success rate and almost mm -hmm. goes back to chaos magic where they try to forget about it but at least at a minimum, as soon as you tell somebody else, and I've read where people say, tell other people what you're manifesting, mm. then it'll be more, you know, and, and so what is your perspective on that? Yeah, so I think it, like, I think it, I got the idea from a more practical personal development that when you tell someone you're going to do something, no matter what it is, if, if it's going to be starting a business, losing weight or right. getting in better shape or, or anything that's positive, like building a habit, if you tell them what you're actually doing is expending that expending energy right. that inspired motivating energy that and, and a part of you thinks oh you've accomplished it by telling other people so that's in a practical sense and i think it kind of is similar in the same way of like what you want to manifest is that when you when you tell people about it it kind of it takes the shine off it it takes the purity in it and people kind of don't have that same emotional resonance and connection to your manifestation as you do so it's kind of like a, it's like a special thing especially the the more meaningful things Mm -hmm. to you and the bigger things so keep, by keeping it special to you you kind of get to nurture it more and i but i find that you can tell people sure and it won't make a difference so long as you aren't changing within yourself and i feel like that's the that's the trouble is when you feel like a whole bunch of people know about what you're trying to create right you can fall into this oh there's there's pressure here people know about me i feel they'll be exposed it's not as special mm -hmm. you know that that's the only issue is when that changes you because then you're out of that aligned state right. that will manifest so i think if if it doesn't affect you tell people if it does and you want to have more time to cultivate and enjoy it just privately sure. get some momentum on it uh first then go with that so that's my opinion so just to go back 
anytime somebody mentions the plat or plate, I, I got to ask you, I mean, do you feel the plat? Do you feel it? When you, when you do that exercise, everybody's different, but do you feel it after you've started to kind of experiment with the idea of the plate? Do you? Well, you know, yeah, you know, it was really interesting. For the first two months, I was doing it wrong. I thought he was, because I was listening to it in an audio book when I heard about the right. plate or plat, and I thought he was talking about the heart center. So I was the right. nicest place manager of my heart. And then it was only like, um, you know, a month later where I was revisiting it. And I was like, hang on, he's talking about a place behind your body, you, you know, like right, this like core of a braid. An energy I mean, cord that extends from the head, but you feel it. It's, yeah, I mean, it's been a little bit complicated. You feel it near your back, but it's coming from your head. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I did, I kind of, I don't know if I've really felt it, to be honest. And mm-hmm. I, I kind of go more with the heart center. So I, I go, I find... I tried the plate a few times. I, I don't really remember if I did manifest anything, to be honest, mm-hmm. um, because in that two months where I was using the exact same technique, but I was putting energy on my heart, it was working. It was working. And I, so I sort of just became biased by my own mistake. Right, right. Just put, put that energy a little bit on the heart, a little bit in the, you know, between your, the outer screen, which is the environment, and your inner screen, which is your thoughts. Mm-hmm. kind of getting that, that awareness and center point between those, a bit of awareness on the heart, and then just to see the scene, eyes open, eyes closed, just see right. it and just drop it. And I've just been doing that and it's been working the same. So maybe if I moved the awareness, you know, a foot back behind on the plate it would work right. even better. But yeah, I, honestly, like I just don't have enough experience on it. But I think it's pretty fascinating because it goes into that whole like ma- matrix idea of we were once plugged in. Right. Are we plugged in? Or, yeah. yeah, are we plugged in? I mean, on one level, it could be that there's a blind spot right there. If you look at quantum physics, we know that the observer effect, and when it's something's unobserved, it's in a wave form. So that would be the one part of our bodies that's a blind spot that we literally can't look at or observe. And so there may be, you know, mm. that energy that's coming into that part of us may be in a waveform type of state. And maybe not just a core, but that's my theory. It could be that we have some... Primal memory. That right. is really, really cool. I, I'm, I'm going to think about that. I've, ne- I've never. But the, uh, but the weird thing, of course, I hear it all the time now. It's not exclusive to transurfing. Um, talk, Dr. Joe Dispenza includes it in all of his. He says, focus on the back of your head. He doesn't say it's a flat or plate. And then you start hearing all these meditators say, okay, now they, they always. And, I, and why was I not hearing this before? Did I go into a universe where that. <laughs> where I was never remembering it, but now all of a sudden I hear it. Like they, it was just a normal thing. Like, oh yeah, we were always talking about it, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. really fascinating. That, that's that's really cool. Like, thanks for sharing that with me. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna explore that further because that, that actually would make a lot of sense. Right. That, mm. So uh, we're getting close to the end here, but I, I like to ask because I'm a huge movie fan. Doesn't have to do anything about what we're talking about. Do you have any movies that you recommend that I might not have seen? So again, Something I know you're a movie buff. I might not have seen, right? I know you're a big movie buff, so um, I was trying to think of the most obscure foreign Bring language. It. I love it, you know? But, uh, there's, I, there's but I couldn't. <laughs> was, oh, yeah? So I, I there's have some to good say, Australian movies, right, that you know, I uh, probably might not have accessed, right? <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, to be honest, like the, the, a recent film that's somewhat rare, but it's kind of a classic that I really enjoyed was Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And I yes. really love that because it was. Have you seen that one? Oh yeah, the the, the classic. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about the Jimmy classic. Jimmy Stewart. Oh yes, yeah. wonderful. So I, now I recently saw it, and I thought that was so cool because it was again about conviction and right. just maintaining true to what you believe is true, and then reality yields. And I guess that's what he was doing the whole time: is he stayed true to his values and what he wanted to see right. happen in the world. What and a I found that one choice of movie, man. That that just that's yeah. so awesome that you would choose of all the movies that one. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that was yeah. There you go. Well, Tom, it's been a, a huge pleasure, man. I've really enjoyed this. And I, and I want everybody to check out to Tom's YouTube channel, Infinite Creations. Also, your website is tomdouse.com, D-O-U-C-E-T-O-M, D-O-U-C-E.com. Tom is offering some free coaching, one-on-one manifestation coaching. If you check out his website, you can contact him there. And uh, just you have regular content coming out, some great meditations I would definitely recommend all of them. I mean, I've never seen a video that didn't have something that, that I learned from your stuff. So keep up the good content. Keep it going. I love it all. So, and I appreciate you coming on. And hopefully you can come on again soon. We can talk about this stuff on an even deeper level because we just went with the surface this time. So mm, you're absolutely. invited back and we'll definitely, let's talk soon again. All right. Thank you so much, Brian. I had an absolute pleasure. And yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on 
Reality Revolution podcast and your show. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Oh.